Hey people, uh, it's your girl Stacey and we're back with another one. So today I have a very important person in my life, my girlfriend Jewel. Um, yeah, obviously she's got her own channel. I don't know man, but the way she shoots is definitely a lot more professional than mine. From the last vlog, you would have seen her. I thought, you know, I'll just record and sort of um, do another like video where I get to know her and just get to know a bit more about her, you know? I'm not gonna do like a get to know me kind of thing because we've already done that on her channel. I'll put the, a link to that video in the description box. So, uh, yeah, do you, want, do you want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> okay okay now i know how you feel when i was introducing yeah, you yeah so um i don't really do the whole like comment and subscribe thing if you have anything to say if you want us to talk about anything just comment if you like the vibe of the video like it if you want to stick around subscribe let's see where I, me i'm just like freestyling on this so if you want to freestyle with me subscribe by the way i don't know what the other two videos are about she don't tell me so no the other one so the other yeah anyways yeah so we're gonna jump straight into our topic because i I feel like I have a lot to say as a person you know you have a lot to say as well right yeah so this video if I could sum summarize what it's going to be about it's going to be things I've learned so far in my 20s if you could choose one thing that you've learned in your 20s what would you choose I think I say this all the time guess you say a lot all the time <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I have actually learned is that things always come together at the end of the day every disappointment is a redirection to something better you say that a lot actually i say that a lot, you say that a lot. i feel like i'm like a living testimony to you that are. every everything example. works out yeah in you're like oh my days actually if this if this didn't happen i won't be here if that makes sense so mm. like yeah then again some things like you just realize that like there's some certain friendships and people that you do not like they do not serve you any longer and at first it may like hurt i longer. feel like friendship breakups i'm not gonna say they hurt more or any less but they hurt just as much as like romantic breakups i feel like no friendship hurts more than depending on the scale of your friendship True. but i feel like the reason why like friendship breakups have hurt me i mean i've only been a broken heartbroken once i'm saying the reason why I think friendship breakups can hurt a lot is because growing up and society as a whole, you're not really prepared for like friendship breakups. From the minute like you start dating and even from like life, like from as early as ever, like you're conditioned to like live life, like with like the foresight that you're gonna eventually get into a relationship. And obviously relationships come to an end. But what I'm saying is that you're equipped to deal with romantic breakups, but yeah. no one ever prepares you for like platonic Friend, breakups. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that that one hurts it like, does. the most all my days. Like some days, like even sometimes it's to the point of dreaming about them, like in my own case. But yeah, then again, when you think about it, you realize that it actually had to happen. Like most of the friendship break breakups that I don't think I've had that much friendship breakup, but the one that happened, like I feel like they had to happen. Mm. You realize that you're losing yourself in that relationship or in that friendship mm. like it depends like my own situation i was losing myself and it was like i was working on eggshells so. yeah that even like i'm gonna springboard off of what you just said i feel like as i've gotten older i've realized that there is no like reward when it comes to like people pleasing because you will end up losing yourself oh my days. and i think for me yeah i've been a person where for as long as i can remember i've been the biggest people pleaser ever same here and i think in the end when you look at everything and when you introspect with regards to people pleasing you will either lose yourself or lose the other person in the end like no yeah. matter what you do because yeah. now that i look back with like friendships like this within the last year or so a few years Cool. during the friendship i was desired and all that stuff because i was the biggest people pleaser ever other people were sponges and they could soak as much things from me but then the minute that i like realized my self-worth and realized that you know what this isn't serving me so let me just either that's when they started Have that or, or, or they came up with something that i done wrong because they no longer like take what they were gaining from yeah. me and i feel like that to me just opened my eyes i'm like you know what yeah there's no like reward and people pleasing yeah honestly people pleasing can like literally drain the fuck out of you. me i can remember like just my people pleasing days honestly it used to be so hard because like you're even scared to pick up their calls or like a station where they're always dumping you on you emotionally yeah tell me your things but like you understand some people just tell you everything and they, they're like selfish about it they don't even ask you how are you doing they could literally be dying they would still be telling you their problems but like me like now i only reply messages when i want to accept his half <laughs> i'm joking 
Mm. But yeah, sometimes no, actually, sometimes I don't feel like replying your message. I don't reply. And that's why you before yeah. you used to have it on red before I could see when she'd open a message. I but didn't now, know. But then I told you now I can't see when she's opened the message. When I know that it's going to take a long, long, longer time, I always say slow replies. Yeah, I say that too. Yeah, but I try to. Too. Yeah. It's crazy because I put a title for this video, but I feel like it's just going to be like a random chit chat. But I'm saying my 20s have also taught me that it's actually, you have to be selfish because at the end of the day, everyone else is being selfish. Yeah. And that goes back to the whole people pleasing yeah. thing. Yeah. Because they are selfish. They are taking Fam, from you. When I look back on like, I'm not going to say one particular like friendship, but let's say a collective of like friendships. The minute I started becoming selfish, that's when out of nowhere there were issues. Like people like selfless people. I feel like my, my 20s have taught me the importance of discernment you have to know who to be selfless with who not to be and when and even the people that you should be selfish with when yeah. to be selfless because it's not every day be selfish to them people even if they are like deserving you're the only one who wants the best for you yeah. ultimately and you can't pour from an empty cup yeah and um you will lose a lot of friends you will. your circle will get very smaller but mm. the quality will get better yeah i will say yeah. right now like, i feel like this time last year i knew a lot more people than i do this year yeah and like even like me that's what i always say like the friends that i have that are like my close friends i don't know i always say this all the time i don't see myself like in any friendship drama when it comes to like my close close closest friends people that i can be myself around like literally say like the stupidest thing and then like i don't feel judged I, i'm not made to seem to look some type of way if that makes sense like same way i sh they showed me love is how i showed them like, i'm very comfortable around them i feel like when it comes to friendship understanding too is there <laughs> What else have you learned in your 20s? Also, have I learned in my 20s that every single struggle and heartbreak that you've gone through is only preparing you for, I don't know, you know, for life. I feel like in every heartbreak, platonic and romantic, I've learned a lot you about learned, myself. Yeah. I've grown. It's made me wise. Yeah. Every breakup I go through makes me wise, has yeah. made me wiser. I'm a lot wiser. Yeah than I was in my early 20s. Yeah. And in my own case, like, it just makes me, like, appreciate and love myself more and, like, really reinventing my... Reinventing I glow up. every After yeah. every breakup, I glow up. <laughs> I reinvest in myself. My last breakup, like, it just made me... My spiritual game just ups more than how it was. I'm not even, like, closer to where I want to be, but, like, invest in yourself more, more self-love, this or that. And it gets you prepared for the next relationship because you're like, this is the standard that I want in my mm. relationship and this is what I am going to tolerate and this. so it's mm. more like a lesson. Again, you know some in some like relationships and some friendships, like when you say your mind or you speak about, it seems like maybe you're doing the most or you're talking the most, seems like it's a big deal. But like, I feel like in the... Right. <laughs> It helps you not to settle for less. I think I should say that. Your next friend or your next partner would not sit down and think that you're, you're doing too much by saying, oh, I'm not comfortable with this. And they respect your decision. Did that make sense? No, I so, get what yeah. you're saying. I think for me, in my mid-20s, let's say, let's say, because I feel like mid-20s mid are like, what, 23 to 25, innit? So I spent a huge chunk of my uh, mid-20s alone. I was like single for like, let's say, two, two and a half years before getting into my next relationship, which is with you. So I spent a lot of time on my own and I feel like the longer you're single for, the more pickier you you beget, um, you get, you beget, whoa, <laughs> English grammar, the more pickier you get because it's like, you can't just let anyone, like, I've mastered peace and I've had peace for like two years, I'm not going to let just anyone come and disrupt that peace, yeah. you get it? So I feel like for me, going from being single and like, doing my own thing for two and a half years to then jumping into a relationship and then having to like be considerate of someone else's feelings and someone else was like hard for me because I was so used to being on my own. Paired up with my abandonment issues, I just felt like I'm all I need because everyone leaves in the end. Can you stop saying that nonsense? I'm just tired of everyone leaves in the end. It should, they do though. It should be an album That's already. That's the circle of life though. Everyone leaves in the end, it but you better listen. not leave. I'll never leave you, baby. <laughs> I've learned in my twenties, you cannot come and kill yourself for a <laughs> <your> job. <laughs> listen. I feel like in my own case, that's where I am. Because... <laughs> Which I hate so much because Jewel of before left a job like after a month because I could not. I've left a job during the day. <laughs> so my first day, I went to lunch. I never came back. <laughs> job. I told them, I told them, don't put me to work at this time. And they put me to work there. Is this um, SS? 
Yeah. So I went home. I just gave my resignation letter. I'm like, I'm not doing it again. I didn't even go back there. They That's respectful. Me. I just don't go in. <laughs> But I love my current job, I beg. For I used to put everything on my head. But now <laughs> I fight my battle. You're so Nigerian. <laughs> now what I do is, if there is something that you want me to do and I know I don't have the capacity to do, before I'll be like, don't worry, I'm going to do it. I'm like, even if my manager, I'm like, sorry, I don't think I can Because there's no reward in stretching yourself yeah. to the point of burnout. Exactly. I'm like, sorry, I, I don't think I'll be able to do that it. That is detrimental. Yeah. Detrimental to the brand yeah. and the mental health. Honestly, because there was even a time, I think I told you, like, <laughs> manager, you wanted to put my supervision for Friday. And I'm like, everybody in there knows I like my Friday stress-free because there are things that I do. And when I put my supervision for Friday, I was like, you can't put my supervision supervision for Friday because I don't know what is coming out of my supervision so I don't want to take that energy into the weekend like say if you have the meeting and it's like oh this is all the things that you're yeah. going on and then your whole Saturday let's say you know I have vibes. to put that into the weekend so I, if it can be in the middle of the week Wednesday so I can take it out on Thursday Friday by Saturday I'll be calm <laughs> and I've learned in my job now I've learned to speak up it's being rude I'm assertive I'm telling you things you don't want to hear. Yeah. And the equality to rudeness. I'm not am I rude? I'm not a rude person. I'm not I'm not rude. Am I rude? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just assertive. You're so just that. Nigerian. <laughs> Those I get it, get it. If you don't get it, <laughs> forget about You're it. Not serious. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thing I've learned in my twenties. The importance of boundaries. Oh. That just goes back to say. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, boundaries. I didn't say that. Right? Boundaries. Mm. Boundaries are so important. I'm like living testament to that fact. Putting up boundaries would just scare away, scare away the ones that were like never right for you. Back to for who you really were. They were just, just sucking from you. Yeah. Like some people I've learned in my twenties, some people do not like you for you. They only like you and want to be around you uh, because of how you make them feel or for what they can gain from you. Obviously, I feel like as human beings, right, every interaction that we go through and every interaction that we have is transactional. There's transaction that's like of substance and then there's transactions that's just, you know, to suck you dry, do you get yeah. what I'm saying? So I feel like that's just taught me that boundaries are so important. Yeah. Boundaries will only scare away people who are never right yeah. for you, people yeah. who are never supposed to be in your life permanently. Yeah. And I've just, I don't know, I feel like I'm just wiser. Like I feel like now, like me personally, where I'm at in my life right now, is sad, but I don't have capacity at this point for any new friends. I only have capacity to like pull love into like the friends that I already have. I hold my friends higher than I hold like romantic. Yeah. No offense. But it's like, with like, no, you're different because you're like my best friend. We started off as best friends, but it's like, you expect the people that you're dating to fuck up. But with your friends, it's like, based on not you, you're my best friend. Your friends, you're like, how could you? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Being my best friend doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The Boundaries are hard though. Yeah, they're kind of hard. Especially yeah. when the other person makes you feel bad. Yeah. People guilt trip. Yeah, people guilt trip. Mm. The power of listening to your inner voice, aka oh, your, your intuition. Instinct, aka your guides. Yeah, yeah, your guides. Because I'm not going to lie. Uh, between now and COVID, I have, like, you know how, like, during the pandemic, many people struggled with employment? I'm fortunate to say that I didn't struggle when it, when it came to staying employed. Me too. Like, I've had. I'm, I don't know, I feel like I'm just like a um, serial job hopper. I just be changing jobs, which makes me, on paper, it makes me look unserious. But for me, whenever I'm in a job, it gets to a point where I sort of like need to listen. For the sake of my mental health, I need to listen to my like inner voice and I need to like just move on. Like my last job I had before my current job, detrimental to the brand, detrimental to my mental health, my spiritual health, my emotional well-being. Yeah, so I feel like my 20s have taught me that, you know what, like sometimes you have to block out what everyone else is saying, what everyone else says is good for your life and just listen to you because ultimately you're the only one that's going to have to like walk in your shoes. You're the only one that's going to have to, because look, my last job, like family and friends, and on paper it looked amazing, but it's like they're just on the sidelines saying, "Oh my gosh, I'm proud of you," but I was the one having to wake up every single day and have to, and have to go to the job. It it wasn't them. Do you get what I'm saying? My twenties have taught me that you know what, like you need to live for you and make your own choices because ultimately you're the one that will be like living in misery. No one else is gonna get what I'm saying. Mm. And ultimately, you're the only one that knows what's best for you. Yeah, true. 
I know we pass this to people like also like boundaries when it comes to your family members. Mm. Not everybody. What, one thing I've learned. Oh, not every family member needs to be prioritized. And then again, like like even when it comes to boundaries, like even in your family is like how they should like speak to you. I or, struggle like, when it comes to boundaries, enforcing boundaries with my family. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, not really. I though. just feel bad. Maybe because like my yeah, I feel bad. But then again, but you know how the way so apologies to, to interrupt. Did you know how the way like we've been raised as African children, right? You're made to feel bad, even if it's like unintentional. Your parents yeah. will make you feel bad for putting yourself first, because they'll be like, ah, after everything I've, yeah. I've done for you, kind of thing. Like you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to like family, even like me, sometimes it's easier compared to like before. It used to be like my dad would be like. Oh, remember I'm your child, I'm your father, I did this and that. Now it does not phase me. <laughs> Maybe because like my dad is like miles away. I just know that I'm not the same person I was. Comparing myself when I was in my early twenties to now, I'm not the same person. Yeah. I'm different. I feel like you've been more selfish but for your own good. Maybe but I feel like I don't know, for me it's like sometimes I like feel like and I was even talking to like Janae about this. Sometimes like I feel like I'm like immature for my age. No. No. Aside from the fact that I'm intellectual and all of that stuff, I feel like I have very childlike behaviours. I feel like for a lot of queer like young people, right, we spent a lot of our childhood and teenage years hiding and being and like performing. Okay, let me speak for, speak for, for myself. I spent a lot of like the years where I was meant to be out, proud, just doing me hiding and being someone that i'm not so for me right now like right now i find it hard to accept that i'm, that I'm 26. for me i'm still 24. covid robbed me of two years and for me it's like i don't feel like old mm. i still feel young i still want to do the things that i was doing when i was in my early 20s i don't feel like i like i feel like sometimes I feel like it's like I, i've not had time to just be do you feel that way or no i feel sometimes i'm like oh i'm 27 and i'm like oh okay and sometimes I, I can't believe that I'm 27 because like, I'm not gonna lie, I see my mates like getting married. And I'm like, really, you guys are getting married? Every day children? I log into Facebook, I have a friend, right? <laughs> she's on child number four. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, I have like a seven year old sister, so I'm not old. In my head, I'm still a child. So like in that, right? in that aspect, I, I really like relate to you. But then again, in general, you're very mature. Sometimes like, I'm like, yeah, she's, she's very- Yeah, but then I do have childlike tendencies. I just drank juice and I was eight. I was like, do that a distance, and chuck I it think into the bin. Does that. I think do you think? Yeah, I do it too. I yeah. just got the ick. Ick for what? I'm joking. <laughs> ick for what? <laughs> there was. Well, I've covered the main things. Think, think, you know, think, things think, I've learned in my twenties so far. Health as well. I will say, I feel like for me, but after my last break break, I really like prioritize my like fitness and stuff. And I feel like getting older, I've realized that I'm acting like I'm 60, but like health as well. Sometimes like, I'd be like, I don't have as much e energy as I had a couple of years ago. So I really need to like continue eating healthy, working out and whatnot. And especially with the state of the like NHS right now as well, you honestly cannot afford to end up with any chronic illnesses because you'll just die on the hospital floor. Okay, NHS. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always rep my service. My service is actually good. But I see firsthand what they do and how they help patients. And I see how they are very intentional, like with patients and how they make sure that. But then again, I know there are some services that we may interact with that sometimes even us, they frustrate us. So I wouldn't say that the NHS is completely bad. I feel like we're fortunate <laughs> to have the. By the same time, we pay for it. I feel like we just need to like say it as, as it is. Mm. We pay for it. When I check my pay stub at the end of the month, I'm paying for it. Sometimes, like, the government wants us to act like they are doing us a favour. Mm. We're paying for it. You can, it might not be upfront like other countries, but we're paying. 20s, I've just learned that it's very important to, like, prioritise your health. health. Because later on in life, you'll see like the benefits of doing that. Yeah. For me personally, like, I, I don't drink at all. I don't remember the last time I had alcohol, but it's like... One thing I love about her. So if I started drinking today, like you'll stop no. talking to me. No, don't I drink? I drink, but I don't get drunk. I drink occasionally, not occasionally. What do they call it? Socially, Socially yeah. Side eye. <laughs>
I've just learned a whole bunch of my twins, I'm not gonna lie. I think what's crazy for me and what I what was what I'm still like deeping is that I think I know everything now. But in a year or two, as I approach my late, late twenties, approaching my thirties, which I think is like the golden era, because everyone I know that's in there, like that's 30 plus. They're glowing. They're glowing. A key thing I've learned in my twenties is that it's important to keep expanding your mind. Keep learning new and things. Network, like, I need to continue stuff, doing that because before COVID, I, I blame COVID for so much. I'm not even gonna lie. COVID was a turning point in, in my life, but I feel like for me, I just need to like widen my network. To round it up, I'm gonna say in my 20s, I've developed a mindset where like I try to work to live and not live to work. I try to plan work around my life as opposed to planning my life around yeah, work. Yeah, that's one thing that has Because to be I need to have a life. When I've had jobs where it's forced me to live to work, I'm miserable. In those situations, our relationship suffers as well. Yeah. Because I'm more tired, I'm more irritable, I'm more cranky, I'm more argumentative. Things just go left. But then when I'm like in the likes of my current job, like jobs that might not pay the greatest, because my last job was you know decent i'm like working to live i'm working to pay like my like basic life bills and also just because ultimately we all go to work to earn money to be able to live let's let let's let let's be mm. real which is why i say i don't have a dream job film and all that stuff for me is like passion so it goes beyond work but it's like when i work in jobs where i'm able to like work to live mm. i'm happier I've learned the importance of having a work life balance yeah I think that's one thing that I want to like incorporate in my life because like even today when I was chatting with Olivia, I was like, so when will we be free? I was like, Matri, this weekend I'm occupied, next weekend I'm occupied, the weekend coming over, I'm occupied. I'm like, oh wow, that's like so unlike me. Yeah. I want to leave my job around my life. No, my, what is it? My Plan job. your job around, around your life. life. Yeah, because... It's just it. a job. It's just a job. Ultimately, honestly. it's just a job. You you are just a commodity. Yeah. Let's just... We, let's keep it real. Yeah. Even though I feel like a valued member of my team... Me too. I'm just a commodity. In, yeah. in the grand scheme of things, as far as capitalism goes... Yeah. We're all just commodities. Commodity. The moment commodities fail to be useful, you'll be replaced with another commodity. So you can't come and kill yourself. Food for thought. That's what I used to tell my co-worker. I'm like, you can't come and kill yourself. You There's no reward in like working hard to the point where you're burning yourself out. Yeah. Learn to work smart than hard. Because yeah. every job, there's a way to work smarter there's than There's shortcuts. Harder. Because I'm going to teach you how to work long and work hard. But people make you, I feel like people, I feel like the system, and not just the system in this country, the system in the world, we're always taught to work, 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 work hard. But I feel like, and we're taught that like shortcuts are bad, but sometimes shortcuts be good. Yeah. So for me, work smart, not hard, because mm. at the end of the day, you want to like reserve as much energy as you can yeah. to be able to pump that energy into what you actually yeah. enjoy. So Work smart, work smart, not mm. hard. I think those are the main things that I've learned in my 20s anyways. Let us know what you've learned about yourself in your 20s, if anything. I'll be in the um, comment section. Yeah, I'm so bad with replying to comments. I just for me, I just, I just, I just get into my head and I, 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 I overthink. No, I don't. Like all my notifications for like socials are off, anyways. Like Instagram off, Snapchat off, Twitter me off. Too. But yeah, thank you so much for watching up until this point. Um, like, I'm gonna in the um, comment. Is it, is it the comment description? Oh, comment anyone. Anyway. In the description box, I'm gonna put a link to the video that we recorded. You can make it the pinned comment. I'll make mine the pinned comment. Because it proves. What, the link? We'll pin up. We'll put. I'm so bad at this. Joe will post the link of the video that we recorded for her channel, which is a get to know me tag in the comments of what this video. What was a get? How well do we know each other? I'm so bad. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. And yeah, we'll see face in the next one. Bye. Intrusive thoughts for the win. <laughs> what is it? What is it? It's just, I'd had it in my mind, I had to say it. Let me take you guys on a journey, so... What journey? <sighs> Let's watch Park a little bit and just see what... Let's start with you. 